At 14 years old, Kamara Sadras is prohibited from taking her school yearbook picture due to her Bantu knots. At 16 years old, Autumn Williams is fired from her job at Chick-fil-A due to her blonde braids being seen as unprofessional. At 17 years old, Chastity Jones is forced to cut her dreadlocks due to her workplace seeing it as improper. Stories like each of these are not an anomaly and common for so many black and brown individuals across the globe. One may wonder how far we come in terms of social justice when in the year 2024, laws are still not in place that allow each individual with these characteristics to show up as themselves unapologetically. Hi, my name is Jolicia Saunderson and I'm a senior at Brandeis University, originally from Brooklyn, New York. Have you ever wondered how hair discrimination functions in spaces of education and the workplace? How much are we taught about the beauty, pain, and history that black hair has been subject to? Matter of fact, are we doing enough for the, to allow those with these differences to show up as themselves unapologetically? Black hair is being discriminated against, and it's up for us to create policies of protection. Therefore, each of these students can exist and thrive. Now I would like you to imagine a copper-skinned black girl named Jolicia. She falls in love with trying new hairstyles. A smaller version of Jolicia with eyes as big as her dreams, creativity as large as the ocean, entering her grandmother's house, which always smelled like oxtails and rice, fiddling through a small purple dresser full of hair accessories. This exploration allowed me to love the hair on my head, from the way it's curl shaped to the way it continued to defy gravity. However, when entering spaces with those who didn't share these characteristics, I was met with words and questions such as, can I touch it? Is it real? I wonder how long it takes you to do that much. Maybe you should go for a more professional hairstyle. It felt as if the safe space of my grandmother's house that held me so tightly had been stripped away due to this harsh reality that I was now facing. For example, at Brandeis, when I had interacted with a freshman, they had questioned my professionalism due to my braids by saying, your braids look nice for a black girl. When encountering this, I was shocked because all black girls and boys look gorgeous in braids. We are the trendsetters in that arena and park. Furthermore, I wanted to engage with scholars and researchers who were looking at the way that black hair was treated in a multitude of settings. I found Dr. Afifa Embalashaka, a natural hairstylist, psychologist, and founder of Psychotherapy, a mental health organization that advocates against black hair discrimination that students face in multiple educational spaces. Her scholarship ignited and taught me that black hair was contributed to the self-esteem of black and brown students and having memories of its shame impacted their self-confidence. Additionally, I engaged with Emma Dabari's book, Twisted, The Tangled History of Black Hair Culture, in which she uplifts the radiance and beauty of black hair. Furthermore, in Emma Dabari's book, I was introduced to a space in Colombia known as San Basio de Palenque. This space was really important because it had history there that uplifted and demonstrated how they used hair braiding to create maps of freedom in order to escape enslavement that they encountered in Cartagena. Given my passion for and love for black hair, I then decided to engage with and create a space on campus called the Multicultural Hair Art and Empowerment Club, where brand nice students who are black and brown could discuss these conversations and uplift the beauty of natural hair. Last spring, I had the opportunity of inviting Professor Wendy D. Green, professor at, law professor at Drexel University, to share words of wisdom and her passion for making sure students are protected in all spaces. Towards the end of this event, we created an art canvas that allowed us to further honor this advocacy and message. Diverse history and stories are really, are really given the opportunity and passion and respect that they should, so it's up to us to bring these to the forefront to allow for these stories to be told. With this, I would like to share a poem I created called, To All Those With Black Beautiful Crowns. Continue to wear them strong in a world that tries its best to dictate, criminalize, and restrict differences and complexities that for centuries have allowed us to curate strong memories. The beauty of our hair lies in its ability to share curls, kinks, and coins that embrace ingenuity. Continue to take time to care, nourish and share the love for it that exists, for it's powerful and deserves to be wear, in every space that is graced with its present style and flair, abundant and bold for the stories, culture, and roots that it holds, quilting the pieces together, woven so intricately and in a distinct mold, beautiful hair that promotes healing, beautiful hair that holds great meaning. I hope that each of you see the power of expressing and allowing for diverse hairstyles to be accepted in all spaces, that you continue to see your differences as strength, and that you follow your dreams. Thank you.